Christina from Off Grid Hawaii. And I'm Mike. And today we're bringing you this video for our Patreons. This is the video that was voted on for the month of October. So basically in this video we want to show you guys what we eat from the land right now. But first we kind of want to give you a little backstory of what we're doing here on this land. So back in 2016 in the spring we acquired this land and our main goals for living here was to be able to grow a lot of our own food. At the time, and even right now, our main food sources were fruits and vegetables. We were very, very into fruit, also just eating a lot of plants. So I guess you could say we're eating like a plant-based diet. So living here in this sort of climate, it was ideal for us to be able to grow our own food year round. But having said that, our goal's never really been to live solely off the land, but definitely to grow a lot of our own produce here. Before we started being very productive here with the amount of food that we were able to harvest and everything, we were going to the market a lot and spending a lot of money on produce and these past couple months, we've noticed we, we barely go anymore. We're getting a lot of stuff off the land. We're really happy about being able to like mm -hmm. eat the food that we're growing after two and a half years of, of being here. So we came to the land in March of 2016. And since then, we were kind of living on and off, going back to the mainland, back to here. But basically in 2016, we started by planting maybe like half or a little less than half of the amount of fruit trees that we have now, which is about like a hundred or something fruit trees. So we planted those back in the spring of 2016. Um, however, we didn't really take good care of them. So they, they're not doing as well as they could have been. And then once we came back again in the spring of 2017, we planted a whole nother batch of fruit trees. And these ones we started off like right and we actually yeah. took really good care of them. And those are doing a lot better. Our first video was how to plant a fruit tree. It has a lot of good information. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff that we wish we did the first time we planted them. We did it right the second time and you guys can learn from our mistakes. Um, put the card for that video above us here. Mm -hmm. Do it right. So a lot of those fruit trees that we bought are fruit trees that are not going to produce till several more years from now. Um, such as like avocados and ulu, jackfruits. What we did plant were a lot of bananas and papayas. Mm. Um, and other fruits such as lilikoi, pineapples, guava, star fruits. And these trees have actually produced a lot sooner and we're actually reaping their harvest. I actually have a list of six fast fruits that we grew. We're really glad that we grew these fruits because now we're able to eat them. Some of the other ones are going to take a long time, but that's okay. It's like a future investment. To sum it up, in this video we're going to talk about what we're eating and we kind of divided it into different categories. First, the different fruits we're harvesting here, also the different root crops we're harvesting, the legumes and the greens. So follow us through our food forest and we'll talk about what we eat. Our two staple fruits that we grow are papaya and banana. We have about 30 papaya plants. We're able to get around 15 papaya per week with the 30 plants. Now, as you can see, there's not much on this papaya and that goes for most of our papayas here. When we planted them, we didn't do a very good job. We didn't use a lot of soil. And as you guys know, there's not very much soil on our land. So like you plant this small little papaya and you, and you think, oh, it doesn't need much soil, but they grow big and the roots actually grow much wider than the canopy they grow. They can grow up to like eight feet from the plant. So they really need a lot of soil and that's something that we would improve on in the future. And we have right here, I planted two other papaya spots where I gave it a lot of soil, I gave compost, I put a lot of mulch there. So I'm expecting those to be way more productive and probably be able to get the same amount of papayas, 15 a week or whatever, with half the amount of plants. That's what we're hoping for. As far as bananas, right now we have about 20 banana patches they all range differently from you know three per patch to like this one behind me some of them have about 10 banana stalks in the same patch but with that amount there 20 patches of banana we're getting maybe like one per month on average we should definitely be getting more once the patches are more full you know like there'll be one rack and then another one just starting so I'm hoping to get a lot more production out of that, but for now we're, we're pretty happy with that. All right, so one of the fruits that we get to harvest quite often, especially right now, is the lilikoi. So this vine, we planted it last year on Earth Day as a small plant, and now it's gotten really big, and we planted a few more along the trellis. For these lilikoi, we can harvest about four 
per day and we like eating them as a passion aid. If you guys don't know what passion aid is, it's the best. It's liliquois mixed with water, sugar, and a little aloha and then you drink it and it's like really good juice. This liliquois has two seasons in the spring and fall. Right now we're in the fall season and it produces a lot and we have a few other liliquois vines growing on the property that aren't as productive because we don't really feed them as much but this one is super productive and it's pretty much all we need. And another fruit that we have that's producing as well is the guava. We have two varieties. We have the white Indonesian guava and the Ruby X Supreme guava. These ones come to like this big. They're pretty nice and they're really good guavas and they produce in the fall. And right now we had a pretty good harvest. Maybe we'll probably get like a hundred fruits in total for this harvest. We eat them every now and then throughout the week. So it's two trees and they're about two years old. We planted them back in the spring of 2016 and they're doing pretty well. One of the newest crops we're growing here is this Chinese eggplant. We have about 20 of them in this bed and they're about four months old. So they've still got a long way to go. These last about three years. But every day we're able to harvest maybe like a handful, a uh, half dozen or so. So it's already very productive. And pretty soon I think we're going to have to be sharing these a lot with our friends and our neighbors because we're probably going to have too much to eat. They're really good though. We really love these a lot. So another important aspect of our diets is leafy greens. What we did plant are things that grow really easily in kind of like these bushes. So we have katuk right here, and we have Tongan spinach right here, and we have um, this bed which is filled with it, but we have a lot more planted throughout the property. And these greens we eat mostly, like 99% of the time, we eat them just cooked in our soups. And our soup is something that we have, if we're, if we're being good, we have it pretty much every night for dinner. Um, sometimes we don't because we eat out or something, but if we're going to eat at home, we always have these greens in our soups for dinner or stir fries. And these greens are very nutritious. They have a lot of nutrition in them. I can't tell you the numbers, but there's a lot of it in there. A lot of protein, a lot of protein in there. So this is something that we're never going to run out of. It's always going to be here no matter what. And it grows just so easily. This katuk, basically, we harvest it and then just stick it back in the ground and it'll grow into another katuk. And same with the Tongan spinach. And the leaves are really big, so we don't need to eat that many. And then they just keep growing more and more leaves. So it's like infinite amounts of greens. So another very important part of our diet is beans. We grow long beans and we grow lima beans and also wing beans that I planted a while ago that just magically appeared onto the trellis unexpectedly and we're getting quite a bit now, it's kind of cool. So we have two different trellises. One is mainly for the lima beans. We have Christmas lima beans and another perennial lima bean which is like a smaller red one. This trellis here is eight feet tall and about 20 feet wide. And it seems to be like we'll get tons of um, beans that we'll be able to like harvest a whole bunch. And then they kind of like stop producing for a while. And it's been almost a month since we've been able to pick from here. The other type of beans, the long beans, seem to just keep producing and be very productive daily. So we usually get like a good handful of long beans. And I just started that trellis not too long ago. That one is 15 feet wide by like six feet tall. Once that thing really fills out, we're gonna get tons of long beans. The long beans only last, like after you plant them, maybe 10 months to a year if you're lucky. These perennial lima beans, especially the Christmas beans, can live from five years to eight years. So the beans we usually cook in a soup or like um, maybe like stir fry sort of. And then, you know, if we have certain root crops like cassava or something, it'll cook and then we'll, we'll make like a stir fry and we'll put it over it. A lot of the times, like, we'll just think of like, what do we have that's ready to harvest and we'll just pile it all in a soup. So another important part of our diet are our herbs. We don't have an extensive herb garden right now, but what we do have is different types of basil that we like to use pretty much every time we make stir fries or soups. And our most productive basil is this African basil. 
it grows into a shrub we've had to prune it a lot because it just gets nice and fluffy but the bees love it there's a lot of flowers all over it and it tastes pretty good but we have better tasting basils <laughs> thai basil that we have a small shrub here and it's getting pretty big and then we have some holy basil plants over here and those are also really good to add to our food I'm sure they have a lot of medicinal properties as well, but we mainly just like them for their flavors and because they're beautiful. Another herb that we have that grows really, really well here is the oregano. It's called Cuban oregano and it gets pretty big and juicy. It's really good and we add that to stir fries in our soups and pretty much we get that year round, it's always growing. All right, so another really, really prolific herb we have growing here is the lemongrass. We have so much lemongrass growing all around, it grows really easily here. And we use this, um, we don't use it as much as we really should. At first we used to make a lot of teas out of it and drink that, um, but that kind of phased out, it might phase back in, um, but we can pretty much harvest it every time we need it for our soups or stir fries or curries or something and it's always here and besides it being a food item we also use it as a mosquito repellent um, and it just smells really good and it's super easy to propagate we'll never run out of this so for the root crops now this is a very important part of what we're growing because they are so calorie dense root crops so like I would consider them a staple food for us it's something that we should eat every day just to make sure we're getting enough calories for the day and we usually have them at night you know with dinner the first one I want to talk about is cassava and that's because that's the one we're harvesting now it's ready to go the growing period for cassava is 10 months to a year so I started harvesting it around 10 months and then I just pick these out of the ground every once in a while whenever we want to have them for dinner. I'm almost done through our patch here, I'm about halfway, maybe a little more. I had about 20 of them in here. For us that was about 20 dinners uh, for two people. Now these roots grow way bigger than what we have um, took out of here simply because I think there wasn't as much soil and maybe we didn't fertilize them as much. but. We're learning as we go and the next time we plant these, I'm sure the harvest will be twice as big because I'm gonna add a lot more of the mulch, a lot more fertilizer, and then just let these things get huge. So the next root crop we'll be harvesting is these Okinawan sweet potatoes. I've already started. I have harvested maybe a foot of this four by 20 foot bed. There was about 15 to 20 in here, so I'm expecting the whole bed to have over 100. This type of sweet potato was the Okinawan staple food, and they're known to live healthy over 100 years old. They say it's because of the sweet potatoes is their staple food. We really love these sweet potatoes, and we definitely want to grow more of them. I've already started two other beds that we're going to be growing them in. The idea is that to have these available to eat any day that we want. The growth cycle for these is five to six months, so I'll have to stagger them so that the different beds will be able to be harvested at different times. I think with three beds, I should be able to do it, no problem. The last root crop that we grow is taro. This bed right here, I planted about the same time as the sweet potato, which those are ready to harvest, but the taro takes a whole year before you can harvest it. This bed is pretty much the same size as all the other beds that I make, about 20 feet by 4 feet wide. When we harvested this, it was pretty disappointing. The corms weren't that big. Some of them were, were big, but others weren't, so I'm not sure why. I've been talking to my friend Ken a lot where I get the mulch, and he's um, been growing taro for a long time, and he's given me a lot of tips. So hopefully this batch comes out a lot bigger and nice. The reason they weren't that big, I think, is just because there wasn't that much soil here. So for this patch here, I've improved. I put more soil, more mulch, and I fertilized them more, and I remulched them like not too long ago. So that's some of the tips he's given me, is just to weed it a lot and mulch them. So hopefully next time we harvest this, we'll be getting a lot more. And we really love taro too. It kind of tastes like a buttery mashed potato if you just boil it and put a little salt on it. It has like a very buttery texture and it's really good. The Hawaiians traditionally would pound it into what they call poi 
and it would just sit out on the kitchen table and ferment and each day it would get a little more sour like fermented food. From what Ken tells me is like you go into any Hawaiian household and there's poi like right on the table and you could just eat it whenever you want. All right, so that's what we grow on our land. Is there any food that you guys grow yourselves or anything that you wish you could grow or anything that you will grow in the future? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it. So guys, one last thing we want to mention is that there are ways that you can help support this channel that won't cost you a thing. The first one is to like or dislike this video, comment on it, share it, and subscribe to the channel, obviously. So any interaction you have with the video will help the video get more views. So we definitely want to get our message out to more people and help grow our channel. So we highly encourage anybody to just comment down below anything that you want to say. Totally awesome. And if you really don't like us, you can dislike the video too. That'll really help us out. And if you really like us, you can even like it and that'll help us out. Sharing it too, I think is probably one of the best ways because you just get more people to watch it, more views, helps us out a lot more. Sharing is caring. The second way you can help support this channel, which I think is probably the best, is to use our Amazon affiliate links. We always link a product from Amazon in the description of our videos. You just have to click that link first and then from there you go and do your regular shopping and anything you buy from that point on will get 5%. So even if you just spend 100 bucks, it's going to get us $5, which is really a lot actually. So basically if you're going to do any shopping on Amazon for whatever you need to get, um, it would help us out if you use our links that we have in the description of our videos. So click on those links and then go through Amazon through those links and then do your shopping and then we get kickbacks for anything that you buy. It doesn't have to be what we actually linked in the link. link. Or maybe you can bookmark the link to be like your Amazon link to your go-to homepage link for Amazon. I don't know, figure it out. It's up to you if you want to do that. The third way is a way that is not free for you. You actually have to pay and that is Patreon. So some people actually want to donate money to us and Patreon is the way to do it. So we set that up for you guys to have that option if that's what you feel like doing. And if you check out our Patreon page, which we have the link for in the description, um, you can see different tiers of what you could pledge per month. You get different rewards depending on how much you pledge. And one of the rewards is something like being able to vote on a video such as this one that got voted on for the month of October. And that's why we made this video. Yeah, and actually it's really been helping us. The ones that the Patreon's been voting on actually get more views than the ones that we come up with ourselves so you guys are really helping us mm -hmm. to get more views on our videos yeah because uh, then we actually make videos that people actually want to see yeah it lets us know what the most popular idea is and then you know we, we make it minimum pledge on there is two dollars so for just two dollars a month you'll be helping us create these videos do you know the story of patreon i do not know the story of patreon please tell me so back in the renaissance era there was the Patreons of the art and these people would donate money to artists to create things in the city so they would be able to get paid and their city would be beautiful mm -hmm. so I thought that was really cool that when I found that out it was after we had already set up a Patreon so in a way you guys are helping us create these videos by which is donating. an art form yeah it's kind of in its own right yeah so basically just being a patron helps you feel like you're part of this whole thing, this channel, what we're trying to do and spread a message of growing food, going with the flow instead of against it. Do things the easy way, but the good way. You have more quotes? Yep. All right, so that's it for now. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and goodbye. Bye, thank you. <laughs> Give a man a fish. He'll eat for a day. Give a man a potato, feed him for a meal. Teach a man in a YouTube video how to grow a potato, feed him for a lifetime. <laughs> Especially if it's a purple sweet potato, feed him for a hundred years or more. <laughs> how come you're whispering though? Because it's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> All right. I think we did it. We nailed it. Nailed it. Everything's good, everything's just as it should be when you're alone with me. <laughs> it's rolling. <laughs>